Hello and welcome to this course, Ultimate Python for Beginners with Projects. Why everyone in IT should learn Python? Python is one of the most widely used language over the web. It is easy to learn, it is easy to read, easy to maintain, a board standard library, interactive mode, it is a portable, it is extendable, it includes databases, it has a GUI in programming, which is a graphical user interface, and it is scalable. Jobs that you can expect after you become a Python expert. DevOps engineer, software engineer, systems administrator, systems engineer, senior software engineer, Python developer, of course, and network engineer. So in this course, we will handle the following. First, we will learn Python from the scratch. And, of course, we will be understanding Python essentials and concepts. We will learn how to install Python, how to write our first Hello World program, the data types, the numbers, the math functions. We will handle the operator precedence, variables, strings, types conversion, formatted strings and the strings indexing, the Boolean. We will learn list and list methods, matrix, the none operator, the dictionary and dictionary methods, table, and we will uh, handle the loops and the if else statements. We will learn the range functions and the functions, the args and key args, and we will learn how to handle and install the packages. And we will learn error handling with the IO error handling, which is input output. Finally, we will practice and with a step by step, we will have a hands on projects. Build our first bot scanner from the scratch. Also, we will build our first web application dictionary discovery, and we will learn how to uh, create a brute force login. All of that will be handled here in this course. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now. Also, we will have a 30 days money back guarantee with job guarantee if you're taking this course. So you will have the confidence in your technical skills for the jobs we mentioned before. Are you excited? I will see you there. Alright, now if you are using Kali Linux like me, you will notice that Python is installed by default. So if I type Python like this, you can see that yeah, it is Python 2.7. Now why it is Python 2.7 by default? Well actually because it is more compatible with some tools. So actually they are still using Python 2. But this doesn't mean that it is Python 2 actually. So if I type Python 3 like this, you can see that it is Python 3.8, which is the latest version for Python 3. So everything is working correctly. So here we opened the interpreter. So if I type quit like this, we exited from that. So this is Python. Now you may ask me how to install Python. If you are using Linux, another Linux not installed by default, for example, or Windows or Mac, well, actually just go to your browser. So from here, I want to Firefox. And from here, just type Python, download or download Python. It doesn't matter. And as simple as that, go to their official documentation page or to their official page. And here you can just download it as is. Okay. So you are currently downloading the interpreter. Now, what is the interpreter and what is the compiler and so on? Well, I will not go into a low level details about the interpreter, the difference between them and the compiler and, and so on. No, actually you can read about it, but I recommend you to read about it actually. But the interpreter simply and briefly, it is just the program or utility that is responsible to translate your code, the, th the things that you write on the editor. To, to translate it so the machine can understand it okay now this is just a simple um explanation you can read more and i recommend you to do that now here if you are using windows linux mac os just download it okay download the interpreter next 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 step N nothing important okay nothing big deal all right okay now this is the first thing which is the interpreter okay now if you want to write your code well actually there are a lot of text editors um including the vim actually and to be honest vim is for the genius people <laughs> anyway now actually it's good and it's better to use either sublime or 
Visual Code Studio. Well, if you have a specific or a preferred um, text editor, it's okay. You can use it. N no big deal. Okay. So here, actually, I want to install Visual Studio Code. So go to Google Visual Studio Code and download from here. And yeah, you can see it is Linux. And yeah, it is Deb Debian, which means uh, Debian because Kali Linux actually is the upstream for it is Debian. So it is Debian based. So yeah, let's download it. And let's save it. Now let's wait until it is saved. When it is complete, just go to where it is. Actually, I have it on download and use this command sudo. For that, let's clear the screen. Yeah, so like this sudo the package, which is the Debian package. Okay, dash i, which means install, or dash i, which means install this package, and I will name it, which is the thing I downloaded, which is code and blah blah blah. And by the way, I'm using I'm using 64 architecture. Now it depends on the architecture you have. Okay. Now let's wait a little bit until it is installed. Yeah, everything is working correctly. Now from here, type Visual Studio Code, and you can see now we have it here. All right. So where where it goes? Yeah, here. Here it is. Okay. So simple. All right. Now actually, in this course, we will use Kali Linux, and we will use Python three, and we will use Visual Studio Code. Now what you prefer, it's up to you. Actually. But and everything will work, okay? So um, you prefer Sublime, you prefer some IDEs, okay? So yeah, it, it will work, no, no problem, okay? But in this course, we are using these, all right? Now, there are la one last thing, actually, I want to mention, which is IDEs. Well, actually, my personal opinion, I don't prefer IDEs at all, okay? Um, so we have this by Charm. And actually, it's very popular IDE for Python. So you can see here, you can just download it from the jetbrains.com, the official website for them. Well, actually, the thing is why I don't prefer IDEs. Well, after all, you are a hacker, right? You are a hacker. You need to know how the things work in a low level details, all right? So by using the interpreter, GCC, using the compiler, using the Vim editor, actually, by the way, Vim editor is, is better in our case because, after all, we are um, breaching into the systems. We are using um, terminals. So you will not find Sublime there, right? You are using, you you must learn how to use Vim, actually. Well, but because um, we are just learning the Python here, okay? So it doesn't matter. So we will go with Visual Code Studio because it is highlighted with syntax, Beta formation, you know, it is uh, friendly actually. You can see now here actually you can just download the by charm, okay? And we have um, the full fledged professional or the theory community, and either way they are good, okay? Of course, the professional version is ha does have more features, blah blah blah, and so on, okay? All right. But in my case, in my case here, I will not use it. I will use Visual Code Studio. All right, now I will see you in the next lecture where we will start learning the first Hello World program in Python. Now, don't worry, we will learn everything in details, okay? So we will start from the Hello World simple program until we reach to the level so we can be able to write our own ethical hacking tools, port scanner, backdoor, login directory, brute forcing, and actually a lot of things. So yeah, uh, just keep with me, let's start step by step and if you feel you are a good in python you can step skip some of the lectures it's okay no problem no big deal but it's better to keep with me okay thanks for watching i will see you in the next lecture okay now it's time to write our first hello world program so actually from here new file now uh, let's quit from the welcome page and here as simple as that just type print and inside it here just double quotation and hello world all right so you can see that the brackets here is mandatory so you need to put them now let's save this i will put it on the desktop all right i will name it um, first dot by okay so let's save that 
All right, now you can see that now it is highlighted, which is something very good. Well, actually, let's increase the font size. Now you can see that here we have um, Python extensions and so on. Okay, so you can install it, which it's okay, no big deal. All right, now let's open our terminal from here. Now let's go to the to the place where we put our program. Now let's clear the screen first. Yeah, alas, which is first dot Python. So as simple as that, you will use the interpreter to interpret the Python you wrote. So Python three because we are using Python three first. As simple as that. Yeah, hello world. Now you can see that it is very simple, no big deal and no complexity at all. Just write your program here using the editor you 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 prefer editor. In my case, Visual Studio Code, and then from the terminal, just use the interpreter Python three first dot part. Now the IDE concludes everything in one program or one step. Just you write your your code here, and you can build it from here or run it from here, and it will show you as a console here or as uh, something like that. Okay, that the output of your statement. Okay. And again, I don't prefer actually IDEs again because you are a hackers after all. You need to go into systems. You need to know how to write codes in a very low level details using the Vim, using the interpreter, the GCC and so on. Okay, so for now, just keep with me and you will learn a lot. All right, I will see you in the next lecture. Okay, now it's time for the data types. Now, actually, what is it? What is data types? Now, data types, as simple as that, it is the way how to store your values. So you want to store numbers, to store characters, um, floats, or specific things. Now, actually, this is what data types. Okay, now in Python, we have um, some data types, like the fundamental data types or essential data types, like int, float, pool, string, list, cubel, sit, dict, dict, or dictionary. Now int for the integers, float for floating point, bool for the boolean, true or false, string for characters, set of characters, which means strings, I mean uh, words and so on. Um, list for if you want to put a list or a set of list. Now tubel is the same as list, but we it with, with some differences. We will talk about that, don't worry. We have set and we have the dict or dictionary as well. Okay, now these are um, for the fundamentals. Yeah, by the way, we will learn all of that in detail, step by step, so don't worry. For now, just keep with me. Now, we have another thing which is called classes. Now, actually, the classes or the class, here you write or you put your own data type. So you modify your custom, you customize your own data type. And don't worry, we will have, a, we will have that in details. Now, we have other thing which is the specialized, which is the specialized as you can see or the special like the modules and so on and finally we have the non data type now actually non data type is very simple or it is it indicates that the value is none which which means that it is uh, not just empty it is none which is null i mean nothing nothing here okay not set yet so you you didn't set it yet so which means that it is none okay and we will have a lot of use cases and a lot of examples how to use that okay so for now just keep with me now in the next lecture we will start the hands-on and we will start as you can see all of these one by one all right thanks for all right now it is time to start with the numbers okay so again this is the first dot pi program so inside it let's print one okay like this as simple as that now let's open the terminal here and let's just up the up arrow and press enter okay the up arrow so which is the last command as you can see by the way i'm i'm pretty sure you are familiar with that but i'm just giving you uh, some hints in case you don't know okay so up arrow press enter which is the last command which is the python 3 first dot by and you can see that it is one because we print the one number okay now what if i type the operation plus or the addition operation like this now and if i typed for example and if I copy and paste that, the same thing for multiplication, for addition, sorry about that, subtraction, multiplication, and division, by the way. So, but let's change the values. So here, let's put 10 minus 1, and here, let's put um, 2 multiplied by 4, or by 3, anyway. Here, let's put 10 
multiplied by five and so on uh, just arbitrary values okay now here if i return to the terminal and let's put that you can see that it is two nine six two point five and so on okay which is two by the way this is um integer multiplied by integer but it will give you the as a float value okay which is 2.0 okay because this is the division now we have this function or method called the type and inside it let's put the value this will retain you the value what will that have that returned okay so if i type here type type 10 multiplied by 5 now this should return float and the same thing for the one plus one i don't need to put them for everything just let let's do that and test it out okay so yeah if i type here you can see that the class is int for the first one which is the one plus one okay now for 10 divided by 5 you can see that it is a float which is the 2.0 so as you can see by using this function we learned how to know what is the data type for this specific number okay now actually there are other things which is the exponential so if i type print like this and two the exponential is double star okay or the art r sticks okay uh, power to three so this will give us eight so if i return here to the terminal and put here yeah it is eight but let's clear the screen actually yeah it is eight as you can see now and we have the module which is the if you can see it is the two in forward slash so if i type here two and here is four okay so this should return zero so yeah as you can see it is zero now don't worry about the math actually this course is not about math but i'm just giving you a brief overview how to use python in that okay now in the next lecture we will start learning some of the math functions actually that can be used like the absolute like the cosine sine whatever okay but again this course is not about math or something like this this is about ethical hackings and uh, about creating your own ethical hacks using python but to do that you need to understand the python first okay all right i will see you all right now let's start with the math functions now actually the math the math functions is imported by default so if i type this function for example the print then inside it i put the round function okay now the round function it will return the value rounded so 1.1 should be one okay so yeah my keyboard still okay so here it should return one so let's clear the screen first and yeah you can see it is one all right now it is one if it is 1.5 it will be two and so on yeah, actually this is the round uh, function yeah this should be two as well okay so actually these functions or methods which is the round the absolute cosine sine these are imported from the standard library which is the math okay so before i show you let's print another um, math function which is the apps which is the absolute i mean so here put minus four for example okay so if i go there it should be four not minus four which is the absolute function it's okay now actually just go to your browser and type the python mathematical functions and then from there go to any website yeah it's okay but it is better to go to the official documentation well actually this is the best practice by the way so yeah this is docs.python.org the math functions everything is there so you can see that we have the seal the combine the the comp the cop the copy sign f absolute factorial floor actually uh, everything will be fine there so if you are interested in such things okay but don't worry again this course we will not handle math at all all right so this is how far we are gonna go just that's it nothing important all right because this is for ethical hacking security cyber security and writing your own tools not for data science deep learning ai or algorithm or whatever okay it's not about that all right okay thanks for
Okay, now it is time for the operator's precedence. Okay, so well, actually, in Python, the precedence is the same as the math. So, multiplication, so addition, subtraction, this is the least precedence. Then, multiplication and division, this is the second. Then, we have the brackets, or oh, before the brackets, we have the exponential. Then we have the brackets, okay? So let's have a real quick example. So print. So let's say three plus four, okay? Now let's put spaces here so it will be more comprehensive. Multiplied by two. Now this will give us four multiplied by two, then eight, eight plus three, which is 11. So let's see. Let's clear the screen first. So yeah, it is 11, okay? Now, if I type brackets here, as you can see, like this. So here, you can see that it is 3 plus 4, which means 7. 7 multiplied by 2, which is 14. So if I type here, yeah, it is 14, okay? So real quick, the brackets is the highest priority or precedence. Then we have the exponential. Then we have the multiplication and division. Then finally, we have the addition and subtraction. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. All right, now it is time for the variables. Now, the variables is very simple, no big deal in Python. Because, so for example, I want to put here, which is var1. Okay, this is the name of the variable. Now we have equal, and let's put 10. Now, this variable is integer variable as you can see if you score of hover here you can see that it is integer now print var1 like this so let's go to the terminal and yeah it is 10 as you can see var1 is 10 so here another thing we can use variables with each other so if i type sum equal var1 plus var2 okay now let's put another variable called var2 and inside it let's put 20 like this so yeah let's print the sum here and let's see what will happen okay so go here clear the screen let's go here yeah it is 30 as expected now what if we type var1 okay plus var2 here inside the print function immediately and by the way it will give you the same thing okay so either with the space or without space it is the same actually so yeah like this so you can see that it is 30 as well all right all right now this is the same thing for 0.5 so if it is float integer it will print and will do everything as expected all right now actually one thing I want to mention which is we can put all the variables inside each other like this so if I type var2 and put var3 and then I put respectively 20 30 so actually let's remove that and if I typed var1 var2 var3 as well and i save it so let's go here and check clear the screen first and yeah you can see it is 10 20 30 okay so you can see that we put all the variables on one single line so python accepts that all right now it is time for the strings now actually in python you know you see that it is not like the c or the c plus plus or whatever uh, c sharp or java that you use or you define your very your variable depends on what your data type like int float so you don't type int var1 dot something equal something no you just type the variable and it is automatically defined okay now the same thing for the string so if i type var underscore s which means var string anything you name it anything it's okay so here inside it put double quotation like this and inside it put hello world or anything you want 
so and let's print it out now let's go to the terminal let's run this yeah it is hello world okay now actually this is the same thing for doing another thing so if i type user and the user equal user one okay for example and we have password or password and the password equal pass one okay yeah by the way it's uh, actually it's bad practice to to put a password inside the code yeah you know that i i'm bit sure you are familiar with that because well da putting the password inside the code now what if this code shared with others well this is stupid uh, to be honest but anyway this is just for example now also we have this thing in python which is the long string so i want to put for example article or let's say not article let's say long underscore description okay so this is the name of the so this is the name of the variable anything but put three single quotation and in multi-line put line one line two blah 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 anything you want then close it with a three single quotations okay you can see that like this okay now save that and you can print anything you want so for example let's print the long description here okay yeah like this anyway let's put it let's write it manually okay so long description here and now let's run that let's clear the screen first yeah you can see line one line two the blah 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 yes something like this okay it worked 100 percent. now there is another thing which is the concatenation so if i want to add the user so let's delete that but the first thing so user plus or addition with the password okay so this will concatenate the user with the password as well okay so if i saved that and if i put uh, or open the cal linux the terminal i mean user one pass one okay which is the user which is this value and this value and yeah by the way if you here if you hover here you can see that it is str by the way if you type the type function okay so type function like this and let's close it so the value should be str from class str which is string okay you can see that the class is str which is string and this is very good actually we can put string multi-line string um username password if you want it to set inside but we we mentioned that this is bad practice to put a password actually it is better to use environment variable and if you are using cloud by the way for example aws you can use parameter store or or, or secret manager this is something from the aws ssm system manager feature and they are enhancing that and actually it is very used in the production anyway that's it for this lecture all right now it is time for the type conversion okay so let's put this var1 equal and put hi or let's name it um string okay and we have var2 and its type is um the number which is 100 okay now if i want to print one of these it will work fine we we saw or we already saw that uh 100 as integer and string as a string which is var1 okay and if i put the type function you can see that it is the same now what if i want to concatenate var1 with var2 but we already saw in the previous lecture we cannot con concatenate string with other values string only with the string so how to do that well actually we will use um a specific functions for that so str and int function so str this is to convert to a string value so if i type var2 so this will convert var2 to str and for int it will convert the value inside it to integer so if i type var1 it will convert it to an integer but by the way you cannot con you cannot convert uh, something like this uh, which is a, a a sequence of characters to integer but it will it may work for a, spe a specific character so c a b c d one of these okay because 
each character has its own ASCII code. All right. All right. For now, we want to check this out. Okay. So when we can, the first thing I, I don't need uh, the integer. I will test on the string function. So here it will convert the var2, but actually it will not convert it inside the var2 and, and update the value inside of the var2 because we didn't put the assignment here, which is the equal. So this value, I want to print it out. Okay, so let's do that actually. It's pretty simple. So here, str 100. Okay, so if I type this, if I save it, okay, and print it, it will print 100. But how to distinguish between if it is integer or not, you will use the type function as we learned. So yeah, like this. And if I save and let's check what will happen this time. Let's clear the screen and let's check this. You can see that the class this time it is in it is st string, which means that the value has been converted to a string value. So this is not integer anymore. This is a, a, a string. Okay. Now how to check or how to convert it? You can just use var to equal str for var2 as simple as that okay and then you can just print the var2 and let's print it inside the type to check if it is working or not so like this let's save that let's check if it is working or not so yes yeah you can see that we have end of file parsing error let's check what is the wrong yeah actually i forget to put a brackets here actually i forget to put a brackets here so let's save now and check again. You can see that the value is str, which is what is expected because var2 is now string. The 100 is now string. As you can see here, the var2 is string, not integer anymore. All right. Okay. So far, so good. Now it is time for the escape sequences. Okay. Now let's imagine we have this value. Okay. Which is var, for example, and we have i. Or, or am a hacker okay now you can see that we have a single quotation here now actually this will ruin everything for us if we are, imagine if we are using a, a single quotation here not as a, a double quotation so like this so actually this will ruin everything for us because you can see the open quotation the single quotation here opened and now we close it here so this will give us an error so it's if we print the var and let's check how it is yeah so if i go here uh, if i clear the screen if you can see that here syntax error invalid syntax on side the i am because the m is outside of any quotation as you can see it is outside of any quotation now how to do that actually well the the best thing is using the sequences the escape and this is the best practice, by the way, by putting backslash here. So which means that backslash skip this character, which is the single quotation. And I am a hacker. So if I save now, and by the way, you can see that it is now highlighted using the visual code studio. So if I go there, if I type by here, you can see now I am a hacker now, which is something very good. Now, what if I want to put something else now what I, if i want to put um i am a hacker slash or backslash anyway um um engineer okay like this now this will give us error now actually if i type this backslash because backslash is used to escape or to do things so if i put backslash with n this will give us a new line so if i type here backslash n engineer forget about the e so backslash n so this will not do this as a backslash this actually will assume that this is a new line so if i saved now and i print you can see that now i am a hacker g near so without the n here okay now just assume the word is g engineer with, without e okay just follow me okay in here so how to do that actually? I think you guessed it right. 
yeah just put two backslashes okay so two the backs the first backslash is the one that we want but we need to skip it how to do that by using the backslash slash okay like this and now let's go there let's run it again yeah you can see that i am a hacker slash engineer okay all right so the what we learned here actually that using the backslash to skip any special characters like the single quotation like another slash and so on okay thanks for watching all right now it is time for the formatted strings so now let's print this field okay so what if i want to print something and with variables and the, this can be um, changed okay so yeah follow me for now so hi for example and here i want to put a specific user and this user i don't need to hard code it it i need it to be here so the user equal okay mike for example okay and age equal 25 for example okay so here it is and i want sorry about this and i want i i want to print mike but you know that i can't put user here because this is a variable right so how to do that actually we will use the formatted strings so i will put brackets like this and your age is and another formatted two brackets or two braces now here after i finish everything inside the print function i will put put i will put dot here and i will put format okay and then i will open two brackets and put the first function sorry the first variable and the second variable the first variable hi user which is the mic another here a list or comma then put h okay so like this so let's see what will happen here clear the screen let's run hi mike your age is 25 so if i return here yes hi mike your age is which is the age variable which is 25 by the way i can put here a hard coded value but actually this doesn't make sense right so i got a problem with my keyboard here actually yeah so i can put mike here and the 25 here and it will work as well so to make sure it is working let's put 29 this time okay okay let's test it out so hi mike your age is 29 which is working correctly all right yeah by the way you can put your variable here immediately so if i type the format is um new user for example equal with double quotation um john this time and the age here so i put age equal 35 for example okay but now before we print this we need to edit this value this time we will put the new user actually and we will put the age here as a new age here or the age here which is the this one so yeah let's save this first then let's run it out you can see that hi john your age is 35 which is the new values that we put here okay okay one last thing so actually what if we want to write something else so here inside the john i don't need to put that i want just to use the user variable which is the same previous way and the age variable as well okay so by the way this is zero index and this is one index okay so here inside the new user if i type zero let's delete the new user all of it so zero and if we here inside instead of age we want to delete and put one as well so let's check this out actually so yeah let's type it you can see hello mike your age is 25 okay so actually here if i toggle this if i but put zero here and if i put 
one here so this will be inverted actually so if you can see that now high 25 your age is mike this should is this should the result be high 25 your age is mike as you can see so by doing that we are making sure that everything yeah actually you can see that we can just index whatever you we want depends on whatever we want all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next lecture. now for the string indexes we want i want to show you this something now actually the string by its nature is a sequence of characters so let's put this variable and inside it let's put a b c d e f g okay now actually what is string is it is a sequence of characters and each character has its own index so we will start with zero one two three four five six okay so actually it is like this so if i print the variable it will print everything right and we already saw that so let's see again yeah a b c d e f g okay everything working as expected but if i put the squared brackets like these and i put the zero for example now this will print only the a character so if i return here and run it you can see that it is a character only now let's return here now what if i type or i want to to have the a b c d only so i will put the colon here as you can see and put the from where to where okay so from two as this so from zero to two or two three okay so like this if i return here run again you can see a b c if i return again you can see that from zero to three but three if you can as you can see three is not included so if i want to d if i want d to be included just remove three and put three four instead then like this go here and as you can see a b c d now another trick now what if i want from b to the end of this so from b which means from one okay and by the way the syntax here is n minus one which means if it is two to four which means i need to put which means if i want it for d i want to put four which is three four minus one which is a three okay so you need to add uh, an extra number for this index okay now what if i want it from b until the end of the string so i i just remove it like this i put it one two anywhere or two nothing okay so this will write one which is from b to the end of the string so let's check this out you can see not a b c d e f g no it is b c d e f g all right okay now this is just to have an overview and have a look about it so you understand that it is not just as is it is very elastic for you okay thanks for watching all right now it is time for the boolean's data types now the boolean is something either true or false one or zero now this is it so how to test this out let's put bar uh, this var variable okay and let's put inside it um true now you can see that the true is the t is capital and uh, without yeah sorry i forget about this without quotation so var one is equal true and if you hover here you can see that it is boolean and the same thing for var two and this equal this time false but as you can see the f is capital as well all right now actually if i print this it will show us so let's print var one for example okay now let's re return here yeah you can see that it is true now as expected actually which is true okay now what if i put zero here or let's put one zero for false and one for true so if i put tr true here let's see put it as zero so you can see that it is integer not a boolean so if i put it or i print it out it will be as an integer so how to do that actually we have this built-in function which is the bool 
this to convert the value to a boolean function so boo like this to a boolean va value i mean so as you can see this is to return true when the argument x is true or whatever okay so you can see that var one now this time it is boolean but let's print this out so let's print this time the var two okay so this should give us the false value so if i type here yeah you can see it is false though it is zero you can see that though it is zero but and it is an integer value but by using the boolean function here it ret it return or it convert this value to zero to something for the boolean to understand which is the false zero means false and one means true okay as simple as that now don't worry about the so we will talk about these uh, more in the conditional and the uh, loops section or lecture there we will handle everything in details okay but for now just keep that on your mind all right i will see you in the next lecture. all right now it is time for the list to be explained okay now the list actually is a sequence of object so if i type list one for example which means list one and then you open a, a squared brackets okay like this and put the value you want so one two three okay another list so let's put list two okay and here inside a uh, squared bracket let's put strings so a b and c as well okay now in let's put another um third um list yeah like these and let's put this time something cocktail let's say it's collection of of integers of um uh, let's put another values actually let's put 10 let's put here um i and here let's put false and then let's put um for example let's put 1.5 okay so it is something like that all right now here actually we can print everything we want depends on whatever we want so so if i want to print for list three for example and i will open the brackets and put the indexes and indexes start from here so this is zero and this is one this is two th this is three okay so i put list three to for zero so this will print 10. if i put one this will print high two three and so on but if i put four as you can see zero one two three four is not here so if i put four uh, for for here for uh, list three and I return here, and let's clear the screen first. Yeah, and here, if I put, you can see that it is the index is out of range because four is not existed. Sorry about this. Let's return here. Yeah, yeah, you can see that four is not existed actually. Only the index three. Okay, so if I type three or let's put two here, and if I print it, so yeah, it is false this time, which means the second or the third i mean the third fall the third uh, object from this um this three zero one two which is the third and everything as expected yeah actually one thing i forget to mention is that we can as we learned previously actually i already mentioned that so list three i want to print false and i want to print high for example how to do that actually it's very simple zero one so i will start from one but the colon and and minus one so i want it to force so what zero one two so i i don't need to put two here i will put three because i need so three minus one will be two okay so zero one two so it will print high and false as well as a list actually so if i click here and test it out you can see that it is this time as a list and you can see that it is high and false as well so you can see that it is very elastic and you can do a lot of list actually so for example you are putting a uh, shopping um cart for example putting um specific values and so on okay thanks for watching okay now it is time for the list methods so just open your browser go to list methods python and here you can see that for the w3 schools and actually this is a good reference and source for information you can see that all the list or the array methods we have on 
mice on Python. So you can see that we have append, we have clear, we have copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, sort. Okay, now one thing I want to mention here. Well, actually, it is not expected from you to memorize all of these, actually. Because I'm telling you, from my personal experience and as a real-world experience, or real-world scenario, you are not expected to memorize all of these. What is expected from you is to know that in Python, in the list or the arrays, there are methods, and these are the methods. And you know that there is something called append. So it is to add element to the end of the list, or clear, or copy, or count, or whatever. Okay, and actually there is something called sort, by the way. Yeah. So you just Google it, or you search about it. Yeah, how to do this? You don't need to ask on forums or blogs, but you know you, you know where to go. Now, I'm telling you, um, actually, this is, after all, this is my personal opinion. If you memorize it, yeah, it's okay. It's actually, it will save you some time, yeah, instead of searching about it and copy-paste. No, actually, you can just type it. But actually, it's not that matter, or it will save you that time, actually. It's no big deal, actually. You will see that these small details is not important to memorize it, actually. But what is important is to know how to search about it and how to find it. So, for example, I want to sort. I will go to the here to this example, and I can see that we have these cars for BMW, Volvo, whatever, and cars, which is the name of the list, and dot sort, as simple as that. So this will give you the cards sorted. Okay, sorted. I think by alf alf alphabetics. So the first one will be PM because this is B, and then will be Ford, which is because this is F, and V, which is because this is V capital. And of course, the capital letter is different than the small letters and so on. Okay. Again, no big deal. You can read about it more. You can check it more, see more examples and so on. Okay. But what is matter here in this lecture, in this course, is to know that for the list, there are methods, built in methods, and you can search about it and they are documented well on the web. Either the official documentation or some good references and resources like the w3schools.com which is something i recommend you to to check okay thanks for watching i will see you in the next lecture all right now it's time to talk about the matrix well actually the matrix is something like the list but it is um sometimes called array or multi-dimensional array or something like that because some programming languages like the c plus plus or c c sharp or i think java itself also use the, the concept or the term array not list okay but anyway they are the same sometimes in a lot of use cases or a lot of things just naming no nothing no no big deal okay so let's put this matrix to create it now i open a bracket squared brackets but this time i will put a brackets like this so put this and put this and let's put this okay as well now, I know you may get confused, but follow me for now, and I will explain everything in detail. So, one, two, three, and here but four, five, six, and here but seven, eight, nine. All right? Okay. Now, I want to print some values from here, right? Yes, this is what I'm all about. So, print, using the print function. Now, I will use the name matrix. So far, so good, right? Nothing in you. Now, this is the new things that have been added here, which is using two brackets, two square brackets. Now, actually, it's very simple. Just imagine with me. Now, this is the first line. This is the second line. And this is the third line. Do you get it well, or not? Yeah, actually, you are right. This is zero. And this is one. And this is two. Okay. Now, inside 0, which is this one, we have 0, 1, 2. Okay? I mean, uh, as an index, I mean. Don't get confused between the numbers. So, actually, it's better to use A, B, C. Yeah, actually, like these. So, I want from the first line, which is 0, okay? The first um, sequence or the first list, which is 0. I want B, okay? So, which is 0, 1. So I will put one. So this will print the B character. Let's check this out. 
from here you can see that a is not defined all right do you know why this happened yeah because because actually i put it as array as a variable actually not as, as a values so i need to provide the single quotation or the double quotation by the way because i want it to be as a character not as a variable so if i don't put that actually it will be considered as a variable and actually it is good that happened and we see we saw that by practice that we need to be careful here okay all right now let's check what will happen let's clear the screen first and Python here you can see that we print B and this is the same thing if you want to print um, um, A so for example you want to print B and C so you will put here colon colon like this and you want it C so 0 1 2 so it will be 3 why because 3 minus 1 equal 2 which is 0 1 2 so B and C this will print B and C let's check this out actually yeah you can see that it is now b and c well actually the matrix and the use cases is very complex um subject so actually you can use that for the screen pixels or using image processing and a lot of things actually in deep learning and ai but for in this course we don't need to handle that in details because we, after all we are writing an ethical hacking tools okay not and something for ai or data science okay Thanks for watching. Now it's time to talk about the NUN. Well, actually, the NUN is how, from its name, yeah, it is NUN, nothing. Okay. So if I type this var equal NUN, and if I print this, actually, this this is not the same as this the white space. The white space has value, but this NUN, which means null. It is not set yet. It is. It doesn't have any value, arbitrary value. Okay, so this is um, not the, like the zero, not like the white space. No, this is something different, which means that this is none. So if you can see that he, this is none type. Yeah, as you can see, not zero, not white space, not nothing. Which means it is the value for this variable is arbitrary or it is not set yet. So let's check this out. Actually, you can see that the value is none. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, now it is time for the dictionary. Now, actually, the dictionary, somehow, it, it is the same as the list, but this time with the key value pair. So, if I have this var1 okay, here and equal. Now, this time, I will put brackets, uh, braces, I mean. Okay, now here, I will put key value pair. So, I will put the first thing, which is name then put colon, then put the name of this guy or this person, which is Mike. Age, for example, and put the value, which is 30 or 31 or whatever, all right? Now, as you can see, if I want to print this value, so I want to print the name of the variable, which is var1, and then put the, the squared brackets, but this time I will not put 0, 1, 2, it's like the list indexing. Now, this time I will put or provide the key value okay which is name or age or whatever and of course with a brackets like this uh, sorry uh, double quotation uh, because this is a string and now let's check this out actually if I print this you can see that the value is wrong yeah yeah actually I forgot to put uh, the list here which means the name Mike age is 30 and I will print the var with name and let's see what will happen this time you can see that it, it is Mike okay now I want and I can put and print the age actually like this and like this so let's check this out actually it should be 30 yeah everything is working as expected and by the way actually you can put dictionary values inside the list so let's have a look here so actually the var1 this time i don't need it to be like this i want it to be like this like a list and inside the list i will put some of the values like one and the other value is two or whatever 
and the third value I want to put it as a dictionary and here inside it I will put this the the, the other thing which is what we handled the name Mike and yeah don't forget to put the comma here and the age put anything you want which is 30 or whatever and let's print var1 but this time I cannot do that because this is a list this is not a dictionary so I will put 0 this will print the first one which is 1 and 1 will print the second index which is 2 and third I will put 3 like this so this will print the dictionary so let's check this out if it is if it is working or not yeah you can see this is out of index because this is a 3 sorry I forget it must be 2 yeah you can see that the name is Mike and the age is 30 okay so far so good now what if I want not everything from the third index which is the dictionary index I want the name and or the age how to do that? Well, actually, it is very simple. You can just open a new one. And this time, we will put the name. Okay. So, if I return here and put it, you can see that this time I print the name from the dictionary, which is the mic. Okay. The value. So, as you can see, key value pair. Okay. So, name, mic, age, 30. And you can see from here, from the second, from the second, the third uh, index, zero, one, two, the third index, print name. Don't print the whole dictionary. So it will work 100%. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay. Again, now we will talk about the dictionary methods this time. Now, again, open your browser here, but Python dictionary methods and open any website you want and I recommend you again to open w3schools.com and here you can see Python dictionary methods which is everything from this list clear copy from keys get items pop pop items set default update values now again op open any one of these and you can see that we have all the descriptions all the things again I will not handle all of these in details actually because they are very simple just copy and paste them just try them out if you are curious well actually nothing here to be taught so the, from its name it's clear it will clear everything copy it will copy the dictionary but how to use it how to do that you can see the examples here because in this course there are other things that matter actually to be taught rather than these it is not expected from you to memorize these actually but you need to learn and to know how to find them and you need to know that for the dictionary in Python there are methods can be used and save you a lot of trouble and efforts okay thanks for watching okay now it's time for the topic to be explained okay now actually as simple as that the table is the same as the list but this time the table is for read only so the data inside it cannot be sorted cannot be modified and so on okay so let's have a quick example so table okay or tab equal and the different the second difference actually we don't use squared bracket this time we use a brackets like these and let's put a b and let's put c now print the top t u b and this time i want the index one which is B okay so let's print this out let's see if it is working or not clear the screen first and yeah you can see it is B all right so far so good but this time if I type top one equal H H H for example or let's put H okay now you can see that it will not work by the way if it is a list it will work okay because if it is a list I can change any object inside the list using the index okay or that list and then change any value you want but this is because it is a table it will not work so let's check this out yeah you can see the table object doesn't support item assign so which means that we cannot do that and actually it has a lot of methods for table you can read about them just google it table methods for python and everything will be there and as simple as that
thanks for watching okay now it's time for the conditional or the if else if statements okay now it is as simple as that the syntax is like this you put the if and then you put either brackets or without brackets but i prefer with brackets actually and then here you put the condition and the condition if it is true then it will print so yeah let's put um explicit value which is the true this will be run the if body which is this one so let's print yes it is true and here we can use something called else so if it is else yeah let's print this time let's print no it is false okay so by the way this will print yes by the way because the because the condition here is true so let's have a look here let's clear the screen and yeah you can see yes it is true which means that it worked correctly because we the condition is true all right now it's time to have some variables some um things actually worked or used in real world not just a simple statement so let's put var one equal 10 and here inside it i will put the if var one less than or greater than or equal equal you can use this equal equal or not equal okay you can use this but for now let's use less than 20 or let's less than 5 so is 10 less than 5 no false it will print no it is false so let's check this out no it is false okay now actually we can put a boolean variables here so var 2 let's put this time um false okay or let's put it as a true so it will show us a different va um, value or different output and here you can just put the name of the variable this is the first one so the the name of the variable will you will do the job because if the var 2 true if it is var 2 var 2 is true so which means the 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 output of the condition here is true which means it will print here or you can put or use the equal equal operator so equal equal and if it is equal equal to a true so this time it will print yeah because it is actually it is true so it will print yes it is true but by the way if you put the bar two which is the true equal equal to false now is var 2 equal to false no so this time it will print no it is false okay all right now you, it's up to you how you write your programs why you to use the condition when to use it what condition you can actually put subtraction addition divided by two modules actually depends on what your use case now this is the first syntax which is if else okay now actually what if i want to put inside the else which is something called the nested if else here now actually there is something called indentation you can see that here the if here start from here as you can see and we put the colon here and here is a, an indentation which means as you can see four spaces which means that this print statement is inside the if body and the else the same thing zero one two three four four spaces and here i can put print or whatever i want here this means that this print function or this statement is inside the else body okay but because it, actually if i put if i put it like this so let's put anything no anything if i removed the indentation and this is what called inside the python like this this will give us an error so if i type here yeah you can see expected an intended block which means that you forgot something so you can put this actually if i type two spaces so let's see yeah actually it works you can see that if i type two spaces it will work but actually it's better to use four spaces because it will be more elegant and modern way to write your code now one last thing so inside the else here i can put an uh, another if and this is what i want to talk about so if i type if another if and put whatever i want then inside it print whatever and for that else 
so you can see statement here and inside it's, you can see what else as well and put whatever you want and then you can print whatever you want okay so actually so here another example here you can see this is outside of the else but if i put it here like this like this now that actually this is inside the else and this is inside this if and this is outside the if else here okay but yeah I, I think it is simple because if you are using visual studio you can see that it is highlighted we have line this here which means all of that is the name all of that you can see that all of that is for the else and here all of that is for if and so on okay now the first the last thing i want to say about or talk about which is the lf okay now this is another thing which is combination of else and if so lf okay so lf put the condition you want and the same thing with in indentation and so on okay but yeah don't forget to put indentation here like this which means that this is inside the lf body okay and of course you need to remove the else here like this so yeah everything is expected so you you put the first condition okay then you use the second condition then you use a third condition or fourth condition okay okay so you need to more to have more filtering so you can use the nested if else all right now actually this is just a simple overview or brief about if else and the conditional operators okay now don't worry about that we will use that in practice when times come to when we start writing our own tools and actually in a very practical way so for now just keep in your mind what is the syntax how to write what are the statement how they work and we learn that we have if we have else we have if else we have if lf then instead if i mean and else whatever okay so and we learned that we have intendation so this is to distinguish between which statement for which instructor or which instruction so uh, this is for the lf this is for the if or if or if this is for the else and so on okay okay thanks for watching. all right now it's time for the for loop okay now actually for loop in python is like this the syntax is for then put the variable you want in this thing and here you put a bracket and you want to one two three four five okay and put the colon here and don't forget to put it inside the indentation so here let's print i and you can see that if i print i here it will print one two three four and so on okay so let's check this out actually so yeah one two three four five okay as expected all right so far so good now if i return here actually and i print i here outside of the for indentation so let's have a look what will happen you can see that the this is from the inside the for loop and the outside of the loop is five as you can see which is the final value of the i because i is a very variable, variable after all and its final value is five okay so that's why it, it got printed as a five all right that's it. okay now if if we want to use the for loop but this time i want a counter here okay well how to do that well actually there are a lot of ways but using the range function the range function is very popular and very easy way to do that so for i n and i will use the range function as this okay and from two so from zero to ten for example okay and then let's print i okay so for i in this range and print i and print the final i now let's check what will happen here let's clear the screen first and yeah as expected so you can see it starts from zero and ends to nine now why it is nine because this is n minus one so which means nine in my case so if i want it to be 10 i need to provide as 11 here and it will work we are using a for loop with an all right now it is time for the for the while loop okay so actually the while loop is somehow different but they are the same i equals zero let's start from zero and i will put while here and while i 
is less than five okay then yeah sorry i forget to put the indentation here the colon here and indentation here so i will print inside it so let's print i and we want to add the value or we will get uh, an infinite loop right infinite loop means that we will start we will still be in the same loop okay over and over but by doing that you make sure that everything will stop eventually okay so i will keep increasing the i value until it reaches five so five less than five false i will get out from this while loop okay now let's run this and test it out actually it's better yeah you can see zero one two three four and when it is reaching five then it will go so uh, it is actually let's have a look here so we will start from zero now zero less than five yes true i will print zero and i will add zero equal zero plus one now the the new value for i will be one okay now again one is less than five yeah press one one plus one and over and over until we reach five four less than five yes print four and four equal four plus one so which means the new value for i will be five five now let's return and check the condition five less than five no false when this means that i will go ahead and i will quit from it okay so far so good all right now another thing here actually used not just in the loop actually in the loop while loop for loop okay the condition something called continue or break or pass okay so let's have an example i equals zero i is less than 10 this time now i will keep updating or i will keep printing the i value okay but here i will have a condition inside the while loop as you can see we are in the side the while loop so if i equal equal five then i will break okay now follow me just in this example and let's see what will happen so this should print only from zero to five because we already printing before five okay before this condition i mean now the break here actually this statement will break from the current loop or the current loop which is the when we have it as a while loop here okay now let's have a look here let's clear the screen first now you can see that it is infinite loop did you guess why yeah because we forgot to add here yeah actually we forgot i equal i plus one all right now actually it's good that we saw that in practice what is infinite loops now let's clear the screen and let's buy so you can see that we are printing from zero to four okay now as you can see when we increased when it, when it, when it became four print four four plus one which means five now if it is five equal equal five yes then break so it will print from zero to four and which means that we print it five times okay now let's have another example for continue statement now if it is continue now let's have another syntax now this time let's print these after the if condition okay so i will have it here but again it is inside the the while indentation so let's print i and let's increase the i value i equal i plus one all right okay so if the value is five this time i will put continue okay okay now you may ask me what is the continue now we learned what is break 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 from the current loop okay now continue which means that continue immediately to the loop all right okay so this will give us an infinite loop why is that now follow me i equals zero it will keep keep until it is reached four so four less than ten yes is four equal equal five no so i will not do this condition and i will go print four now four plus one which is five so the new value is five five less than ten yes five equal equal five yes continue so i will go again five less than ten yes 
is five equal equal five yes continue so if this will give us an infinite loop okay so let's test this out actually it's better to have it with real action so yeah you can see that we have an infinite loop but without printing anything as you can see the cursor is stopped moving so which means that uh, this is an infinite loop and actually this is bad so to avoid that we will add the i equal i plus one here and we can remove this or you can comment it out it's okay no big deal so now let's have a look yeah you can see that this time one two three four and you can see or you can notice that five is not here now why is that let's have a, another look now when we reach four four is less than ten yes four plus one five now if it is five let's continue so when it is continue it will return again so five less than ten yes but it will increase so we didn't print five at all so six yes is i equal equal six no so i will print six and over over until i reach ten actually or nine and why you may ask me but why it is ten because if you have noticed here so when we reach nine nine less than ten yes i add it here as you can see i didn't quit from uh, i added nine plus one which is ten and i print it out okay so that's why it is ten this time okay now finally we have another thing which this time called bass now bass means that don't do anything just bass this now how what is that exactly and why it is used now sometimes you wrote functions or you wrote specific indentation and you don't need to do anything currently or you don't need to do anything just to check if it is something or not okay and you don't need to include anything you just need it to be empty but you know that empty is not acceptable with with python so if i removed this and put if e i equal equal five without anything inside it so let's test it out this actually it's better and if i run this you can see that expected an indented block which means that we need to put something here so how to do that actually we will use the bass which means that in this indentation or this block there are nothing but actually not nothing it is bass so just pass that so let's have a, a look here let's run this let's see what will happen let's clear the screen first yeah you can see this time we printed everything but this time five is included because we didn't continue when it is five so we already print that so which means that when we reached five we did nothing okay and we print five okay that's it all right thanks for watching all right now it is time to learn the functions in python now the functions you write a specific commands or specific instructions and then you call that function over and over you don't need to write and rewrite everything over and over so for example you add 10 to specific value okay okay by the way we already saw functions yeah yeah you know by the way print is a function apps is a function the int is a function int with this that convert the value the str that we saw is an is a an function okay but these are called built-in function and what we are going to do, to do is write a customized function so i want to add function to add 10 to the value that i put or i sent okay so how to do that actually before that let's have a look on the syntax the syntax is like this you type the name def which means define and the name of the function let's name it fun one okay open the brackets and inside the brackets we have bar one bar two so the, these are called parameters these are value that can be passed when we call this function we will have we will have that and we will see it now i will open the colon here actually i am th i think you are getting familiar with python now because you can see that these are the same thing that used when we used if condition while let for and so on okay we can just open the brackets and put the colon here and we need to to, to put it inside the indentation okay now here inside it let's print this is inside fun one all right okay okay now also we can have a return value so we can return value return for example 10 all right or return function or return variable that we defined here inside the function 
So if I type or if I declared i equal zero, and if I return it here, so return i. So this will return zero. Okay. So this function will print this is inside fun one, and will it will return i, which is the value of zero. Now how to call this function? Actually, now just as simple as that, I will name I will put the name of the function, which is fun one. All right. But you can see we required to add part parameters because we have bar one and bar two. But for now, let's delete these like that and let's see what will happen. All right. By the way, the value returned i equals zero. It will be here. So let's have a look what will what will happen. You can see this is inside fun one. Yeah, but the value 10 is not here. Why? Because we didn't print it out. So if I print it out like this, using the print function now if i return here and run it again now this time not this is inside fun one only but we have the value of i which is zero okay so far so good now let's have another thing okay now what if we have a parameter so here bar one and we have bar two okay and this will return i plus bar one plus bar two Okay, so far so good, right? And when I return or I call the function, I, I need to provide values. So I will provide 10 for the bar one. So simple, right? And 20 for the bar two. And as you can see, it is integer and integer. All right, now this is what we will receive and we will get. So 10 plus 20 plus zero, which means 30. Okay, so let's have a look here and let's run it. So you can see it is 30 as expected all right yeah by the way if i print i here let's put a brackets yeah if i print i here yeah let's have a look what will happen actually yeah you can see that i is not defined why is that because i is inside the scope or the indentation block of this function only so this is a local variable but if i de de define it here all right, let's have a look here. So if I define it here, i equal 10 this time or 11 this time. Now i value will be 11. The, but the precedence when we are inside the fund one is go to the local variables, which is the i equals zero. So here, zero plus 10 plus 30 plus 20, sorry, which means the value will be 30. But when I receive it here, I will not print i that one inside the fund one. No, I will print it that the one, the global i, okay? Let's have a look what we, what we will receive. Now this time, the first i is equal 10 or 11. And you can see that this is inside one and 30. So which means that we didn't do that. Actually, if I remove that and I returned only the value of i like this. So this should return zero only okay and actually let's print this inside you can see that yeah I, I i'm pretty sure you are getting the idea but it's good to have a uh, practice on that so i bar one bar two so yeah like this so you can see that i here will be zero the, the printed one but the print i outside the function will be 11 because this will use the global i okay you can see that yeah 11 this is inside fun one and the inside fun one is zero okay which is this one and the return value will be 30 which is 0 plus 10 plus 20 the parameters we pass okay all right so far so good thanks for watching. now we learned what is function and what is the parameter what is the return the values and so on okay but now, what if I want to add for this fun one more than parameter one and parameter two? I want a lot of parameters. How to do that? For that, we will use something called the arcs or star arcs. Okay. So here, instead of typing the bar one, bar two, no, you just delete that and put star arcs here. And when I return here, I can put 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Okay. Actually, let's delete this print statement and the return value as well. And the i here, I don't need that. 
and actually I don't need to print anything I just want to call the function and I will do the print inside the function which is like this and here let's delete this ah uh, it's okay no need for that yeah so you can see that now and when I when I am inside the function one as I put a lot of arguments and all of them are integers now I can just print these arguments by doing the args like this okay so let's print that and see what will happen let's clear the screen yeah you can see 10 20 30 40 which is something fine and of course if I want the first argument or the second argument I will need to put one which is 0 1 okay so let's save that and test if it is working yeah you can see this time now it is 0 1 which is the 20 value okay okay so far so good now another thing we can use something called key arguments or the key word arguments okay and for that I will put that inside the parameter for the function or the argument so here you can put two stars and key key from the kid character w args okay like this and then instead of using or printing the args I will print the key args the keyword okay but actually what is the keyword args so here when you put this thing this thing which is var1 equal 11 for example and var2 equal 12 okay so this will print var1 and var2 actually because these are the keyword arguments as you can see the parameter is star keywords okay so let's run this and check this out actually it's better yeah you can see var1 is 11 and var2 is 12 and actually for the keywords actually this is something familiar we already saw that this is the dictionary so if i top i put here and put in double quotation var1 for example and i return here and test it out you can see that we just printed the var1 which is the 11 which is as you can see this is the dictionary okay but the args is like the list all right all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next lesson all right now it's time to talk about the packages and the modules in python okay so actually you can see or you remember when we created our first first five file okay now it's time to be more realistic okay so here you can see that we have the first .py. okay now the first thing let's make this directory and let's name it python underscore files okay and by the way let's remove this first python we didn't need it anymore so let's clear the screen and let's go to the python now let's go to the python files okay now here inside it let's touch our first file and touch this is command used to create a text file it's okay you can use whatever you want or you can use actually the visual studio itself from here you can create a new file from here anyway it, they are the same nothing important so main.py okay this is the main function and let's create another thing now this time we want to create um first dot by first something it's okay okay now let's make another directory and this directory we will call it functions okay it's okay just arbitrary names so we have the first dot by the main dot by and we have the functions now inside the functions so let's go to the functions inside it we want to create another file and this file we will name it fun1.py and let's create fun2.py okay clear Alice. you can see that now let's file open a file or open a folder from here okay and the folder will be python files okay now okay from here and you can see that we have it here let's quit from this we didn't need it yeah so you can see that we have the functions we have the main we have the first dot by okay so again the first thing i will go to the main now the main here i will print this thing and this thing will be called this is main dot by okay and the first here will be print this is first and the functions inside function one let's define this function 
function, whatever function it is, it's no big deal. And let's print inside fun from fun one dot by and fun two. Let's have it the same as fun one, like this. But this time it is will be from fun two, like this. Okay. Okay. So far so good. Or right. now I want for all of these to be connected together or can be imported together. So, so we will use this statement, which is the import statement, and I will import a lot of things. So actually, I can import mod modules, library. So for example, OS. This is a low a library or a, a a module can be imported using Python, and this can use or run commands on the operating system. We have sub processes, we have math, we have a lot of things actually, but all of these are standard or a built in. Now, what if I want to add a one of these? Actually, I can do that. It's okay. So the, the first thing you need to understand that we are inside the main and the main is the same level as first. So I can just add import first. Okay. So if I import first, I can do whatever I want. So for example, inside first, let's remove the print statement, this, let's put i equal 10, all right? And here from first, I want to print the i, okay? But I can't print i like this. I need to, to modify or to add this thing, which is first dot i, okay? And i is the variable inside the first dot by, that's the one we, we imported, okay? So let's print this and run the main actually to check this out. So let's return here. You can see that we have the main by so Python three, the main dot by. Yeah, everything is working as expected, which is ten. This is by dot main dot by, as you can see. Now, if I removed the first actually like this. This will not work because i is not defined here again let's run yeah i is not defined because i is defined inside the first dot by which is i equal 10 this is inside the first okay so to do or to understand or to import the i inside the first you need to put first dot i first then we can print it out all right and of course you need to import it first all right now, what if I want to import these functions? Okay, I want to print the, in the function, this function. Okay, I want to call this function. That inside fun will do it by fun one. How to do that? I need to use the import. Yeah, you are right. But this time you can see that fun one is not the same level as the main, which is the one we are. No, they are inside the functions directory. So you need to put functions like this and then put dot symbol and then use fun one as expected now how to print that or actually how to call this function so i want to call this function which is fun and that print this statement how to do that well actually you can do this by putting this thing functions dot fun one now dot fun with this so this will call the function inside the fun one that inside the functions directory okay now hope this will work let's see if it is working or not now let's clear the screen first and let's run it yeah inside fun from fun one and this is inside or this is main dot by yeah everything is working correctly now this is the same thing for fun two okay okay now let's return for the first okay let's uh, put a, a comment here actually now by default by the way this is the comment in python and let's print the value from the first dot i okay now we already saw that we don't need to run it again but actually what if i don't need this to be here i want to just print um i immediately okay how to do that well it is easy so print like this and yeah as you can see import first here this time we will use this from 
argument or from word so from first import star okay you can see that so i import it from first first do by import everything so this time i don't need to put the first here you can see i can print i immediately so it will print i from here okay now let's check this out actually yeah you can see 10 has been printed without using first dot by inside the main i mean okay another thing so actually this will be working on the functions as well so if i import functions without putting functions dot by and i called the function but this time i called not one and this the thing we already saw now this time i will print the fun two. okay now let's comment this print statement and see if this working or not so you can see yeah functions has no attributes fun two. why is that because you can see that we import functions and inside functions we cannot do anything so you need to specify fun two actually so like this now if i type it yeah this is inside fun from fun two dot one all right thanks for watching all right now it is time to talk about error handlings in python now the first thing there is something called the input function in python which is like this input open the brackets inside it put the prompt message so please enter a value or oh, let's do this and then we can print this value okay but actually let's store that inside a function which is inside a variable i mean and let's print the x like this so you can see this will receive an integer value or uh, actually this is a uh, if you notice here it is a string value actually but we will print it out okay so let's run this command uh, i mean uh, the main dot by which is the python so please enter a value i will put or i will enter hello and you can see it now it is hello has been printed okay but by the way you can put to be more elegant actually you can put colon here with a space and let's try again so yeah you can see now it is more elegant please enter a value and i will put lol or whatever okay so this is it okay good so far so good now let's return here and let's this time let's put another value so 12 yeah it will give us 12 again what if i type colon here uh so a double quotation yeah everything is working correctly now this time what if i used the integer value okay so i want this value to be entered as an integer okay so i'm using the integer converter function so anything we enter here must be integer or if not integer i will convert it okay so let's run this and see enter a value if i typed a you can see that it is wrong why because invalid literal for int with base 10 a but if again if i run that and if i run 10 yeah 10 is acceptable because this is an integer but if i run or put any string value or any value rather than int it will show us this error okay by the way if i type 10.5 it will give us error as well because this is a float value the value must be integer only okay okay so far so good now how to do such a thing without erroring without putting this errors so we want the error to be handled okay we don't need to print out there are error this is not elegant we need an elegant solution how to do that we will use the try except which is the error handling in python so how to do that by using try try what try these okay now if there are errors or something except so as you can see these are inside the try indentation so except and double quotation and colon here i mean if there are error let's print for example oh no there is an error okay anything this is just arbitrary example okay 
So if I try this again, when I enter 10 or any integer value, it works fine. Okay, so let's clear the screen and let's try enter high, for example. Yeah, you can see now, you can see now it is, oh no, there is an error. Okay, so it handled the error with elegant way. So if there are er error here, not like before, before it will give us what is the error and uh, actually this is bad. No, this time, if we face any error, actually it will print this statement or it will do these things inside the except so for example your value that has been entered is negative you can inside the except you can put it or use the absolute function the apps and convert it to something positive and then you can assign it to the value you want okay well actually it has a lot of use cases you can read about it if you are interested actually if you open your browser and you go or typed python try except then you can go to the w3schools.com and here you can see that there are a lot of examples and not just try except there are another format which is the you can put or raise the name error and another other errors actually you can see so try print x except name error okay and print and then finally accept this okay so actually there are other formats like that using the else as well so you can see try these print hello accept something else and we have the finally and here you can see that it will be raised as you can see try accept finally so this will try the accept after it is finished and you can see there are a lot of examples here all right if you are interested to have or to learn more about it okay but anyway it's not that big deal to know everything, but just know that there are other format and other use cases. You can read more, more about it. But for now, keep in your mind, this is the way to handle the errors in Python. Thanks for watching. All right, now it is time for the Python file IO input output and how to handle it. Okay, so you want to read file, to open file for writing, to open file already existed for writing or append to a specific file we will use and actually this is supported in Python. Good news. Now, how to do that? Actually, it is like this. So first declare a, vi a variable and we'll name it. I will name it in my case f, which is referred to file. I will use the open function. This is to open a file description. Then it has the following. So it has the first parameter, the second parameter. The first parameter is the name of the file. Okay, so I will name it whatever I want. And you can choose this file to be either read, write, read, write, to append to it, if it is already existed or not. Now, actually, that's depend on the mode, which is the second parameter here. But in my case, I'm using the read mode, which is I want to read a, a file that already existed. So I will return here. And by the way, you can see that the main dot by here, it is here inside the Python files, if you remember what we did previously. So you can see that now I will create a text file here and I will name it test.txt, okay? And I will put here, as you can see, some values inside it. Yeah. By the way, I'm using the echo command and the touch command to create a text file and to add this spe specific value, which is the sum values inside it. Actually, it's up to you. You can use whatever text editor you want. No, no big deal so actually let's open this file and i'm using vim by the way here so let's put line two arbitrary values line wh whatever and here is end of file for example or if end of or the end of line okay last line for example okay and let's save it by the way if you don't like vim i recommend you to learn it and to know how to use it for well, actually it's very powerful text editor yeah i know it is um old-fashioned let's say but actually for you as a hacker been tester cyber security engineer it's important actually and very recommended i recommend you a lot to learn about it and it's shortcut it's powerful usage anyway just use any text editor for now if you are not familiar with them and 
put arbitrary value inside the test dot text file that that already here inside the same level of the main dot by that we are writing and now let's name it so test dot text file and i will open it for read okay all right now i want to print the content of this file i will use the read function so f which is the name of the variable that we stored this thing and i will use read okay so this will read the whole content of this test text file but it will not be printed because the output will be here so i will use the print function for that and then i will i will print the read like this so actually if i go there and and see if it is will show us what we need so if i type the python 3 main yeah you can see it is as expected there's some values line 2 blah 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 until we reach the end of line last line okay so as you can see we open this file for read as you can see the mode is read and the test the text file is there and existed but what if we put this two actually and try to read this out actually read to the text is not here so as you can see no such file or directory error now actually don't worry about this we will handle it in the next lecture immediately how to handle the errors in the file io and you know it is not something big deal it is the same way as what we learned previously from the error handling and you can see that we will start using specific file errors or specific errors inside the except okay anyway until that time it's no big deal okay for now let's open a file for writing so test two but this time the mode i will use it for write which means i want to write inside it okay and this time i will add this content so let's see can content equal and this is the content i want this new content to be overwrite overwritten onto this test two file but actually it had it is empty and it is not existed so yeah this is the only data it will be so some content okay and for that i will use this time i will use the f dot write function okay so the write function here it will write to this f that we open it for writing and what we will write we will write the content the content variable as you can see content like this and yeah this is the variable and finally after if it is everything is correct we want to print and read what inside this this two it should be cause some content right let's check it out let's check it out actually yeah you can see the file is not readable yeah you may ask me but what happened well maybe you forgot something actually well this f dot read yeah we open it as what as a write so how to read something opened as a write this is not right right so how to do thing here about it well actually we will use the close function so f dot close function so this will close the file description that we open it as a write then we can create a new variable and use the open function and name it test two dot text and this time we will open it as read not as a write and then we can read this out and it should be working all right let's check this out so let's create the screen first and you can see yeah it is working as expected and which is some content okay so far so good all right and yeah regarding the modes actually and the functions for the file io you can just open your browser and type python io mods and from there you can see there are a lot of and from there you can see there are a lot of websites a lot of references but actually i recommend you to go to the official documentation because there you can see that there are a lot of examples a lot of functions you can use so yeah i need to go to the io not the input output yeah here yeah here you can see that we can add we can this is the open the encoding so you can see that we have modes this time and don't worry right i will show you the modes right away just quickly i mean so here you can see that we have a lot of functions actually so you can see that the flush closed is sati readable read line read lines seek 
tell actually a lot of functions can be used and useful can be depends on the situation you want so act actually if i go to this website i just want to show you something here the mods actually you can see yeah these are the mods that are available on python so yeah you can see that we have read we have read binary or read b rb so this is to read in binary format only we have read rx r plus which means read as you can see open file for both read and write okay so not just for reading it you can be for reading and writing and you can see that the pointer placed at the beginning of the file all right we have write we have rb plus which is read binary we have uh, write write binary w plus and as you can see here the w plus is for read and write but this time over time overwrite the existing file if file exists if file does not exist it will create a new file okay and the same for wb plus the read binary plus a for append and now this is something new and we have ab appended for the binary and we have appended for both reading and binary in a binary format because this is a b plus by the way and the point term will be at the end of the file if the file exists okay all right have a look there try these out if you are interested now in the next lecture we will talk about the error handling for the python files how to when we open a file that file is not existed how to handle such errors in very smooth way all right thanks for watching all right we already talked about how to open a file in the python for reading for writing bending whatever okay and we checked the modes that are available read write read plus read write appending uh, for binary and so on okay now what if we want so f equal open and we want to open a file that file is not existed actually so test three this time the text and we want to open it for read okay it's a uh, it's a simple example okay, actually no worries and i want to print the content of it as we learned previously no big deal so read and yeah so let's save that actually and check if it's working or not it should did as you can see we don't have test three here so yeah no such file or directory okay now how to solve such a thing we don't need such a thing actually this is ugly and this is not impractical so we will use the try and we already saw that how to do that so try these okay so far so good now accept this thing now remember when we bought just accept now no this time we will put another value now we will use something file not found error like this the f is capital file not found like this so this means that the file is not found this is not just an error this is a specific error from this error now why is that because we don't need just any error i won't do, i will do this no for example if the file not found i will do a specific thing if the file there is errors with the io so the file is existed but the file cannot be opened for example i will do another things and so on okay so if this happened so i will print for example file not found okay so far so good now another exception except io error now if happened there is a high or io error this time i will print o io errors happened okay now whatever okay cool now let's check this if it is working or not now this should be printing file not found because the test three is not found okay so let's open it actually yeah yeah so far so good file not found which means it worked correctly so which is better actually this is file not found with handling the error or this is error no such file or directory and a lot of files a lot of text actually this is ugly this is not good and by the way not just that actually this is more practical so it's not like printing just a simple file not found so for example if the file not found i want to create it okay and i want to put a specific value inside it then i will read it so you can see that there is 
some practical things here actually and if the file i o error or whatever and this happens for a lot of use cases or a lot of situations whatever there uh, you can just read about it so it's not a big deal okay then i will do specific things or whatever okay yeah you can see that by the way i am writing the print here in a bad way so it is bright tn not print and you can see that it didn't show me any error by the way why this happened actually because the interpreter python interpreter is doing the things step by step so it will go to the try then to the f open then to the print then then to the accept and so on so you can see that it's sequentially and it didn't check the syntax so you can see that the print it is, is error there was error in the syntax the, the print i wrote it in the wrong way so it didn't show anything error here because the accept go to the file not found and it stopped there okay so it didn't go to the accept on io right okay thanks for watching i will see you in the next lecture all right now it is time to write our own first board scan okay now actually i am assuming that you know how board scanners works so i will start right away okay now actually i already write the program as you can see to avoid wasting your time to avail to avoid stupid mistakes um taking a lot of time actually this is not good but don't worry okay actually i will explain that in details line by line okay so i by the way i already upload this code so you can download it you can have a look there and you can have practice that with me okay so the first thing which is the import and we imported the by figlet now what is this library or module so actually if you write it on google as simple as that now actually you can see that it is just takes ascii text and render it in ascii art font okay so if i return here again so you can see that i'm using this variable and i'm using the by figlet dot figlet format and i'm using a some text here which is the board scanner okay so i'm typing the board scanner here and i'm printing the ascii banner okay so if i open my terminal here and run my code by the way i'm i'm putting it here bot scanner.py and i want to run it okay so like this and for now ignore this invalid amount of argument we will talk about it right away but for now you can see the bot scanner has somehow the vibe of a hacker or something like that you see you see so you can see that it is somehow elegant and you know or to putting as an ASCII or something. Yeah, well, by the way, you can just put port scanner or we don't need that. So what is matter is, is the functionality, not the, the stuff about it or the way it look. So if we return here, you can see that the port scanner has been written as a, an ASCII text banner. Okay, so if I type um, test, for example, so and I return here, actually, you can see that now it is test, by the way. All right, so far so good. Okay, so if we return here, let's return this to port scanner, and you can see that we open a variable using this by figlet, which is the imported one. Dot figlet dot format. This is a function within the figlet library, and inside it we can put the text we want, which is port scanner, and then we print the variable we de we we defined or we stored that inside it, which is the ASCII banner. Okay. Now this is for Figlet. Okay, now we can see that we imported the sys library and this is used, you can see that here. And this is what I talked about, which is the invalid amount of argument. Now here you can see we, we used sys.argv equal equal to, so then the target will, we will take or we'll do something. We will talk about this right away, don't worry. Else, which means the argument is not to or so it is less than two or more than two this is not acceptable so we will print this invalid amount of argument okay now by the way we already saw that so let's see again so you can see that this is the python 3 and this is port scanner.py so if i write here so actually you yeah you can see that it is invalid amount of argument yeah by the way i forget to to save here so let's return let's clear the screen and run again yeah can see that invalid amount of argument okay now this is not acceptable because why why is that because we bought only bought scanner but we need to provide the ib address actually 
by the way you can see here you can say here in valid amount of argument you can you must put so you can modify that you must insert or put or enter the ib for example okay it doesn't matter actually no big deal so let's delete this and run it again you can see yeah invalid amount of argument you must enter the ib anyway it's no big deal actually okay now here for the sys all right so far so good now for the socket now this is the main library actually that's being used in board scanner okay so this is socket to open a socket and connection between the victim machine so, so we want to scan there or his ports okay you can see that when we so it is less than one less than two or greater than two it will print invalid amount of argument but if we provide the argument we want so if i return here and put put it like this and define something here actually so you can see that this time it will take it will we will go th through the if body and we will define a target variable and inside it we will use the socket dot get host by name and actually this is function within the socket library and here inside it we will use the sys.arg1 argv1 okay so by the way argv1 which means that this one okay so actually it starts from here so zero one okay so you know that why it is two because this the bot scanner dot by this considered to be one of the argument by the way okay so this is the first argument and this is the second argument okay now i know this is not an ib address or not an host but this is just a better example by the way i will put a real ib address right away okay but for now keep with me okay so this is the first argument this is the second argument okay so that's why we put if it is only two it will be acceptable only if it is two arguments which means the name of the python program and the ib address that we want to scan the board on okay okay so what we will get here so we will get the sys.arg which is the sys library here dot arg v and the one which means this one okay so start from here zero one i'm pretty sure you are getting familiar with that so i will not repeat that again okay so this is one okay now if it is done so we will store the get host by name so the get host by name here by the way if you can if you can search about it so just put it like that and say python and open the official documentation and from here you can see that we have it here so yeah get host by name so this what what this do it translate a host name to ibv4 address format okay so actually it translate to ibv4 now the ibv4 is returned as a string such as this one now if the host name is an ibv4 itself is returned unchanged so either you provide for example a host name for example google.com and it will translate that to its own ibv4 as you can see or you can just provide the ib address of this machine and it will scan it immediately or sorry it will return it unchanged immediately okay all right now let's return again so the ib address that we provide here so by the way actually it's not good practice to to scan a real machines actually it is very dangerous you will get yourself in jail for that well i know i know it is not, not for just scanning the board but actually it's better to be cautious in this in these scenarios so by the way how to do that actually i have this machine as you can see i'm using the metasploitable machine and this meta metasploitable tool actually you can just download it no big deal you can download it and run it on your virtual box as you can see as a virtual machine and then you can just have have it here i have config and i will get my ib address which is as as the following okay so which is this one which is the, something within my machine and within my power so no harm and no damage will be done okay so you will be safe and you will not go to jail so if i type it here you can see that the board scan worked okay so and so on all right so you can see but don't worry about these we will talk about these in details right away i'm just showing you step by step okay so we got the ib address immediately okay unchanged all right now we talked about these 
So far so good. If it is the argument and else if it is invalid argument. All right. Now here, just some accessories to make the utility we are writing more elegant. So we can, you can see the, that here. If I return again and run this command, you can see that I'm doing these, some of the text. You can see dashes multiplied by 50. So which means that this will be printed 50 times instead of typing it like these, I mean. Okay, so instead of like that, no, you can just put the number you want, put that string I mean you want, and multiply it by how many time you want. Okay, now here scanning the target, and this is the target. As you can see, if I return here, you can see scanning the target, and this is the target, which is the IP address I provide here. And here scanning started at something, and here, okay, this is the second thing. Or the other thing we will talk about, which is the date time. So actually, I imported from date time, import date time, and here date time dot now. So here it will return actually the time currently. So if I return here, you can see that the time is like this. Okay. So I return what is the time currently, which is like this, as you can see, which hour, which minute, second, millisecond, or part of the second, and so on. Okay. All right, again, we just print it as is. So you can see the scanning started at something. So to be more elegant and so on. And we print another um, dashes. So you can see we have these here. All right, so far so good. Now here is the real deal. Okay, now here is the real bot scanner. Now all of that was just for banner, for printing out and to be more elegant and so on. Now this is the functionality. This is the real deal. Okay. Now, I already to told you that we import the socket and the socket library here is the main thing that we will use for our port scanner. Okay, so I opened a try and accept. So try this. Don't worry, I will talk about it right away. And accept something, accept something, accept something. All right. Okay, now for the try, try these. Okay, let's start with the for loop. Now, for port in this range, so by that, actually, we start scanning the boards from one until we reached this number. But by the way, not this number, this number minus one, which is 99. OK, by the way, you can put here an variable like this and put X equal input and put inside it, please enter a value. OK, by the way, you need to convert that to an integer like this. You can see that like this. So here we can um, in, in prompt ourselves so we were to scan, not as a hard coded board. No, you can just customize it as you will. Okay, but for now we don't need that actually. Let's return to the previous. So we don't need that. Well, actually, you may ask me, but this is a symbol. Yeah, I know. And why should I learn or know how to write my own board scanner where there is a tools like Nmap, for example, and it is very powerful, open source, and it has a huge community. And actually, of course, it is very powerful in comparing with this tiny tool, actually. Yeah, I know. But for you as a hacker, not all the time you need to depend on other people's tools. You need to write your own tools sometimes. Okay, so that's why. Okay, let's continue. So we started with the for loop and we start from 1 to 99. Now here we open a variable and this variable we called it s and we inside it we used the socket library dot the socket function. Now this is function from the socket library and here we defined that this socket that we want to open the socket is like a bucket imagine that and we defined the criteria the standard we want our connection to be with the other people or with the other uh, the other end and we define that it is to be afi net and sock stream now what are those afi net which means ibv4 okay and sock stream here means that it is for tcb transmission control protocol okay so which means that we are opening tcb connection on ibv4 with the other end okay and we store the value of that or the returned value inside the s variable so this s will be used later on as you can see here okay don't worry we'll talk about it now after we open that now we decide or we put the socket dot set timeout or set default timeout 
The circuit, by the way, this is the library. We import it. And the set default timeout to be one. Now, why it is one? Because we don't need to have the connection up for 30 seconds, for example. So this will take a lot of time. We can put actually another values like 10 seconds or five seconds or whatever. Okay, but one second for to be for it to be more fast. Okay. So why is that? Because when we connect to a specific board, for example. But don't worry, right now we didn't handle the port functionality. We didn't handle the port functionality yet. Right now we are talking about the connection. So here we will talk about the port, okay? But don't worry, Let's we will talk about it step by step. For now, follow me. Okay, so default timeout. So when we connect with that criteria to that specific port, we will not handle more than one second. Okay, so after one second, it will be considered timeout. Because we assuming that one second means that the port is closed. So we don't need to know more about it. Or the, or the port is open. We will know within this period. Okay. Anyway. All right. Now we will have the result variable. And inside the result variable, we will use the S variable that we stored our socket criteria, which is IIBV4 and TCP. And we will use, as you can see, S dot connect X. Now connect X. It, it accept two arguments, but as a table, by the way, you can see that it is accepted as a table. All right. Now, the first thing is the target, which is if you return here, this is the IP address we entered. Remember when we put the IP address, the second argument, arg v1. Yeah. And the board number. Okay. So the board number, it will start from the loop. So it will start from one until 99. So it will... Try one, then two, then three, four, until it reach 99. Okay, so then the return of these will be stored on the result. By the way, the connect X will return zero if the open, if there are a connection. Other than that, it will be considered close. So zero, as you can see here, yeah. If the result equal, equal zero, this will be considered board is open. And you can see we opened, we used the formatted dot format the board. Because I'm using the braces here. Okay. Other than that, it will be considered closed. Now, how did I know that? Actually, it's not from myself. I get it. No, actually, this is how the function works. It returns zero for connection or for a connected socket. And it will return other than that. So 195, zero, uh, one, I mean, uh, 10, uh, some errors or some values. Okay. And these will be considered closed. Okay, so no connection at all. Okay, so either it is a, there is a connection or there is no connection. If the result here, if it is zero, which means that the, the result of the connect X will be zero, which means the board is open, there is a connection. Other than that will be considered closed. But you can see that I didn't put else here because we just need the opened board. We don't need any board, right? By the way, you can customize that on your own if you want to have some elegancy, like you need to need to know if there are no ports open, you need to print those. And actually, it's no 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 big deal. You can just put it here. And this is something can be done by defining outside the try here a boolean variable, and inside it put is no port true. And if there are some port, it will be true false. Okay. And and here outside the try or outside the the for loop you will print no port is open yeah yeah actually it's uh, it's up to you how the logic you will use on that okay no no big deal okay now after we checked the result is equal zero and we print the port is open or there are nothing then we will close the connection so as you can see s dot close yeah hey, here it is the s which is the variable we stored our socket criteria so s dot close okay and for these anything or any exception happened either if it is keyboard interrupt or socket dot guy error or socket dot error we would print and we will do the following which is print exiting program or print host name couldn't be resolved or print server not responding by the way the gay error and error these are from the socket by the way from the socket library you can read about it so actually it's better to have look here so you can see that it is here yeah 
a subclass of OS error. This exception is raised for address related errors, blah, 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 and so on. You can read more about it if you're interested. But anyway, because sometimes this is, uh, uh, these for the host couldn't be resolved. Actually, these are used for the host couldn't be resolved. And the socket.error, these are used for the server not responding. Okay. Now, actually, this port scanner is not 100% accurate, but you can say it is good for a start. Okay. All right, now it's time to test this out. By the way, I recommend you to install um, a, a meta exploitable virtual machine and run it on your system like this and copy the IP address and let's try our port. So you can see that here I put from 1 to 100. Okay, so let's check. So you can see that port 21 is open, 22, 23, 25. By the way, this machine actually is compromisable, actually. Yeah, because th this is the meter exploitable. It is a lot. It has a lot of holes, a lot of vulnerabilities, bugs, a lot of dangerous breaches can be done to it, actually. Yeah, but this is intended for that. So that's why I'm using on machines, not on a real world or real life machines like Google.com or like some servers online so you may get in jail for that or get in trouble at least for by using that or by doing that okay now thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this lecture i will see you in the next lecture now it's time to create our login brute force okay for the web application all right now actually i already uploaded this file which is the brute force.py so you can download it and writing the code step by step or Tracing the code step by step. And already I have this file which is rockyou.txt. And actually, this is the file. Yeah, as you can see, it is here. So this is the file, the same file as the Cal Linux file, which is which contains a lot of text files. So if I cat it here, it will take a lot of time, as you can see, it's still bending. As you can see, yeah, it's copy that. So it's I get here the u dash h. This is to see the size of the file. You can see it is 144 megabyte. And by the way, I already uploaded that for you if you want to use it. This is a huge word list. And by the way, if you have Kali, you can find it there. It's okay. But if you don't have it, you can download it and start with me. And by the way, I will use this rock u the text as a word list so we can check and check the users or the password I mean for this specific user that we provide don't worry we will handle that right away but follow me for now okay now but again please don't use these to attack people to damage systems and so on okay I warned you I'm not responsible for anything of that okay please use it for you as a white hacker to have a career to have a job to defend people and so on okay now let's start so this is the first thing, which is the import request. We already talked about this in the previous section. Now, here I'm using something new, which is term color. And uh, it is no big deal, actually. It is just print a color for a specific text or something. Because as you can see from term color, we imported colors here. So the colored function, as you can see, this found username or found password will be printed as a green. And you can see that uh, where it is, yeah. Yeah, you can see that here, the trying with the password, it will be printed as red. Don't worry, we will write, we will handle that right away, step by step. But for now, these are used just for coloring the text, okay? Just for, to give you the vibe of a hacker or something. Well, anyway, no big deal, all right? So now let's have this. This is the first thing, URL. This is a variable. We input, please enter a page URL. So you put the full URL here, okay, that you want to try and brute force on it, okay? Now we have the username here. Please enter the username for the account to brute force. So you are using user, root, admin, user one, whatever, okay? So it depends on you. And by the way, we can have a list this for this as well, but actually it is it will be exponential. So it will take, a, it will take forever actually. Anyway, but we are assuming that we know the username. So that's why please enter the username, okay? Now here we have the password file. And here you can see enter the password file to use. So you put the name of the file. But by the way, which is the rockyou.txt. This is the text file or the word file that has all the passwords inside it. 
and you can see that the is they are in the same level as the brute force dot by which is the program we are writing or we are interpreting okay now finally we have this variable which is the login failed string so here you can see that please enter a string that occurs when login fails so when you type root and with the password tour for example which is the inverse of root it will give you login failed or uh, invalid credential or access denied or something like that so you need to know the the target machine what will give you when you put a wrong credential okay don't worry we will handle all of that in this lecture so just follow me for now and we will reach that level okay now we have this function which is the diff cracking but before i go into it actually this is the main logic of the brute forcing before i go through it i want to check here or i want to have a look here so to understand this more so you can see here actually this will be executed before or interpreted let's say before the diff cracking because we call the cracking from here anyway follow me for now so you can see that here with open and here you can see that we are using the with and as statement okay so with this function which is open password file the file we opened for the password as you can see which is this one and as a read mode so with that as a password so which means that everything you opened here as a read or all the passwords that you have it here open it as a password here so store them there and we will start that right away okay so after that you can see that we have a colon here with this as this inside that inside the with as statement we are calling the cracking function okay which is cracking the username that we ins insert here we assuming it is user admin root whatever and with the URL, which is the URL we input here, enter a page URL, okay? So we are calling the cracking function with these arguments or these variables that we stored here and using the with as statement by doing with open this file, which is the password file as a readable and as a password, in make it as a password, okay? Variable, okay? Now, actually, after we use the with as statement, and we call the cracking function. So now it is time to handle the cracking function. So you can see that we define the cracking function. This is the first parameter. By the way, I'm using username here. By the way, this is not the same variables. This is only for the scope of the cracking, not for this one. Don't get, don't get confused, please. Okay. And the URL here is not the same for this URL. I mean, as a variable, not as a value. Yeah, by the way, because we are passing this username as which is this one, as you can see, this variable that we are passing to the cracking function here, but we defined it. The name here is username. By the way, I can put username too, okay? And user and URL too. And I need to change the necessary here inside this function, okay? Because this is username or this variable is not the same as this variable. They do not point to the same address, okay? Anyway, for now, just follow me. Let's let it as is which is username and URL. Now, here we have the four password in passwords, okay? Now, we already talked about the for statement. And by the way, we are using the passwords that we use it with the with open password file read as a password, all right? Cool. Now, we are handling the passwords one by one. So you can see that we open this password file that the rock view, the rock view file, and you can see it is very huge file so if i cut it here yeah you can see i'm still it's still printing yeah so i interrupt it all right so you can see that it will start using this password one by one so and all of that will be inside the for loop which is this one okay so it will start with with this one for example until it reach or complete or whatever it will start with this one this one this one until we got what we want or anyway we will handle that right away so here we have after the first statement, which is the password, the password now it will be password.strip. Again, we already saw that in the previous section as we don't need white spaces or whatever. So we are using this one. Okay. Now print. Now, as you can see, now we are using the colored function here that I mentioned, which is using the term color library. So color by actually, actually, this is a function except a table and with the first thing, which is, as you can see, the first thing and the second thing which is 
as you can see so the first thing which is trying with the password and the other thing which is the color of this text which is red all right don't worry we will handle that as a hands-on right away but currently let's understand the code first then we can try it out all right so we just printing trying with the password which is we have it here after we strip it and we have it as a red so this to tell that we are trying this password currently so we don't need something or utility so to give me a black screen and it is still rendering we don't know the progress about it no we need to know where are we currently what is the password that we are currently trying on and so on so that's why we are printing trying on this password so now we have data and this is a variable and inside it you can see that we have these things and you can see that the username is username the password is password as a dictionary if you noticed and the login as a login or the login here is as a submit okay because here this is used for the login button when when we put the username and when we put the password and so on and you can see that the username here is the username we have it here actually we got it from the username and the password here is the password we got it after we strip it okay all right now you may get confused but follow me in the next step we will understand actually in the next line so here you can see we have a response variable and we are using the request dot post this time okay we don't use the get and we have the url which is the url we inserted here which is this url by the way yeah and data equal data so the data here this is used for the post function and the data this time will be this data which is this one that we have that includes the username as you can see which is the username the password which is the password after we strip it and the login which is submit okay because this is a post request now you may get confused or you don't know what we are talking about but don't worry when we try this code you will understand everything okay now if this login failed string in the response dot content dot decode and you, you can see that the response here which is this one after we got it from the request to post so the response dot content dot decode so if we find the login failed string that we entered here that when that occurs when we login fails which means that we need to pass which means that that this didn't work else which means that yeah we found it we didn't found it we didn't found the login failed string which means that yeah we connect successfully which means this time we need to print with a colored function yeah found this username and we will put the username we found with a green this time that there is a red and yeah print found the password and again the password we have here after we strip it out yeah as a green as well and let's exit from this function so as we don't need as you can see this is an infinite loop or maybe actually it's not an infinite but it is a very huge well, actually it is the same as the number of lines here inside this the, this file which is the rock u so if i use this command which is the word count dash l so th this is to count the lines inside the rock u text you can see that we have a huge number of lines yeah actually you can see it is a huge number of lines so we will wait until that this is doesn't make sense if we find the password and the username or the password for this username then we are good to go we don't need the other things right okay now imagine or let's assume that we didn't found anything we still inside the bass 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 until we reach the last command or the last password in this file which is <laughs> which is this number okay so after we finished the rock you the text file and still we didn't found the password it will get out from this cracking function and it will print password not in the list okay so that's why we put the exit function here so this exit function it will exit from the current root force dot python which is this one okay so if we find it it will exit if we didn't find it it will still keep bass until we get out from this cracking function and then we will print this password not in the list by the way this is my logic you can use your own logic actually there are a lot of logics how to do that and how to do such as things actually let's try this out actually it's getting boring here so let's time to to do this so yeah python 3 so brute force to pi and let's press enter please enter the page of the url by the way 
I recommend you to download and install the Metasploitable, which is the Metasploitable machine. And here you can see that we have this thing, which is the DVWA or the damn vulnerable web application. And actually, this is something very popular to test your web application and so on to test your skills on hacking the webs. So actually, this is very good. So for the username, we have this one, anything and the password, anything. So you can see that we have a login field. All right. Now let's return here. So what is the page for the URL? As you can see, I just copy and paste it like this as is. Press enter. Now, what is the username? So actually, by the way, if you can see that the username is maybe root, maybe admin. I don't know. So let's try admin. I, I think it is admin here. Yeah. And for the password, by the way, actually, this is something very simple because the bus, the username is admin, by the way, and the password is password. So uh, it is something very simple and easy. I don't need programmed actually to find this out, but let's assume that it is something complex. Anyway, now enter password file to use, which is rock you the text file that we have and enter the string that occurs when login fails, which is login failed like this. So let's put it like this. And yeah, you can see that trying this, trying this, trying this until we reach the password. So you can see that trying password. Yeah, admin password. So let's try this out. All right, time for testing password. Yeah, everything working as expected. So you can see that. Yeah, actually you change your password because it is very simple and very easy. Stupid actually password, not just simple, it's stupid password. Anyway, now you can see that we are able to log in to the page with this username and this password and with very um you can see cool way as you can see the, this will give you the vibe of a hacker as you can see this is the color here is red and the color here is green but you you can see that because i'm using already a green color here so you can see that this is why it is green but actually the green scale here or the green color is not bright like this one this is just for it to be fun okay and by the way one last thing i want to mention please i warn you to use this on a real target or real machines okay so actually i'm not responsible for any attacks damages or anything that happened i'm i'm teaching you an ethical hacking to use it to good for you and good for your company your your organization country institution whatever okay so don't use it for bad purposes thanks for watching